Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan. And what I'd like to do today is to show you all how to use the Excel financial model that is included in the purchase of my business plan templates. And before I get into that, um, now this, this video is going to be a tutorial and I'm going to walk you through a, a typical uh, Excel file that has a financial model in it. I'm going to show you how to change the revenues and the cost and your startup cost and you, your monthly expenses. And I'm also going to show you how to go ahead and take that information and put it into your Word document. Now, a couple of disclosures real quick. First and foremost, this is an Excel file. So the Excel finance, the, the financial, financial model is an Excel file. As an Excel file, it is not compatible with Google or with Apple products. So if you were, use Google Drive and its um, spreadsheet there, you can't copy and paste the information and the financial models are not going to, um, they're not going to play well together. So just keep that in mind. If you have Excel, um, th this template will, you know, it, sh it should work well for you. Um, I can't promise that it's going to be all compatible to different, um, different um, Excel files. Um, but for the most part, I'm getting a lot of good feedback that it is. Just keep in mind, you do need Excel in order to utilize and change the information. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into our um, financial model. So once you purchase the <coughs> business plan template, you're going to have a um, Word document that you're going to change. You'll be able to modify the information in the Word document, but also you're going to have your financial, your Excel, um, Excel file, and that's going to be your financial model, and that's the, the that's the focus of this video. And the Excel files are 95% similar for all of my templates, um, all of the business plan templates. I, I've got a, a very similar uh, financial model, and all you have to do is just change the numbers, change some titles and you're ready to go. So just keep that in mind. This video, even though if some of the titles are different, you can change it around and, you're, and the video is still going to be helpful um, because it's the same structure. All right. So the way that my financial models are set up is that you're going to have three tabs. You're going to have an information page tab. 95% of all the information you're going to want to change is on this tab. And when you make the changes in these dark purple areas right here, in these sections right here, once you make these changes, then your financial models here, the, the pro forma income statement, um, the, the month to month, the profit and loss. Also, your income statement information will update and also the summary page will update as well. So when you change all the, any of this information here, it's going to roll over and it's going to update all these other files. So just keep that in mind. Also, one of the things that you cannot do is add additional lines. So I've got this line right here. You can't add a line below it or you can't add a line above it. If you do, you will break the financial model. You break the financial model, you're going to be starting all over from the master file that hopefully you've saved. Um, I don't, I, I personally do not offer free and phone converse, um, consultations to fix models that you, that somebody might break. So just keep that in mind. Um, there, there's no, this tutorial is all you're going to get um, to use this file. So make sure you, you would adhere to the, uh, the parameters set for it. All right. So for this information page, like I said, this is the holy grail. This is the creme all the creme, the I Ching, the where you want to be to make all of your changes. And when you make these changes, it will update all of your information. And this page is, is broken up into a few different sections. First section is your daily sales. Next section is your labor. Then we've got a startup cost section, a monthly fixed cost section, a miscellaneous section with your taxes. You've got some growth rates right here. And then we've got your loan information section. For the first section, I'm going to have, depending on what your template is, so for this particular example, average construction job. And so for the, this is just, you know, what is the typical customer? Um, what's the average dollar amount spent um, for a particular customer. If it's a construction job, you know, it's going to be per job, how much you anticipate to make per job. If it's you're a retail company, then it's going to be per customer sold. If you're a manufacturer, it's going to be, you know, per order made. So that's how I'm going to average the daily sales. For this example is average construction job. This next line right here is variable cost. So let's say we have sales of $100. This means that our variable costs are $40. We're not going to change this item right here because it's not in the dark purple. We're going to change it right here. This is our variable cost. So let's say our variable cost 
is 35% of our sales. What that means is if our daily sales or our daily customer per customer order is about $100, <coughs> then what this means is that our variable cost is 35%. If we're selling clothing, then we just sold one customer and our average customer is gonna spend $100 and it costs us $35 to either make the shirt or to um, buy the shirt from our wholesaler. The next section right here is going to be the number of customers. Let's say we're going to do fit. We're going to service 15 customers a day. We're going to put that, we're going to make that change right here. This is the dollar amount that we anticipate the average um, customer to spend. So if our average construction job, let's change this to retail customer. And we can change these titles. We just can't add information. So we'll change this to average retail customer where we anticipate on a daily basis, 15 retail customers and each customer that walks in, they're going to spend about a hundred dollars. And if they spend a hundred dollars, our variable cost is $35. So we have to buy when we buy our shirts, each shirt might be $35 for us, but we're selling it for a hundred dollars. So that's how this, this section right here works. This right here is the number of days um, per week in operation. If you're a retail store, you might be working seven days a week. If you are a construction company, you might be working five days a week. But once you change this, then, then the formulas are going to update. And again, it's going to update your revenues and costs accordingly. This part right here, I wouldn't make any changes with this right here. Just I just leave that the way it is. The next section is going to be for the labor. For the labor, the first one is going to be salary. How much money do you want to pay yourself? You want to pay yourself $3,000 a month and make that change right here. Next section, next um, uh, segment underneath is the number of employees. If you anticipate having four employees, then put four employees right here. And this is going to be your average um, rate. So how much are you going to pay your customers? Make sure you include taxes in there. So for this example, we're going to say that we pay our employees $15 an hour. And so we'll put it right here. We've got four employees. And then the hourly per month is how many hours are they going to be working? Are they going to be full time? Then it'll be 172. If they're going to be part time, then we'll take that 172 divided by two, which would be 86. We would put then 86 hours right here. I'm going to change that back to full time. The next section is going to be our startup cost. So for the startup cost is how much money are you going to be investing? How much money are you going to be borrowing? And where is the money going to be going? So for this particular example, we're saying we're going to drop $25,000. Equity investment is $25,000 coming out of our pocket. And then the next section is going to be the loan, 75000 When you change this or when you put this information here for the loan, it will also update this, um, populate this right here. And then we can change our terms for the loan. So if we change right here to um, 60000 it all populates right here. Interest rate, we can change our interest rate to 5%. We can change this to 30 years. And then this information right here, our payment will automatically update. And it will also automatically update our profit and loss statement, our income statement, and our projections as well. The next information is going to be our build out and our purchase. And so for this particular example right here, we're saying it's $5,000 to build out the office space. And then um, working capital is how much money you're going to have in your pocket once um, you start operations for this particular example, $25,000. The rest of these items down here is going to be industry specific. If it's a restaurant, then I'll have typical restaurant startup cost. If you are a retailer for um, bicycles, then I'll have typical retail bicycle store cost. So um, you can change the titles and you can also change the dollar amounts. But again, I can't stress it enough. Just don't add lines to it and you'll be fine. All right. The next is going to be your monthly fixed cost. I also have a nice little chart right here you can go ahead and use. Um, so I'm going to, for the monthly fixed cost, I'm going to have right here, this is going to be your rent. Um, if you're not going to pay rent and you're going to have a um, property, then you'll put zero right here. And then that information is removed. We're saying I'm going to go with rent at 1500. And every time we change that, our little chart updates as well. Utilities, let's say our utilities could be 600. Office expenses might be 300. And then insurance might be 250. Counting and legal, 100. Advertising, we're going to drop some money for advertising. And then other is going to be the catch-all. Um, there, there's, there's been never been, in my most humble of opinions, there's never been a business that started um, that has not run into a 
um, unexpected costs on a monthly basis. I mean, there's just no way you're going to be able to predict what your monthly costs are going to be. Um, you know, they call them fixed costs, but guess what? They change. So the, the other is going to be your catch-all. If you've got like seven or eight other costs that you're going to have in here that there's not lines for, then go you know over here and um, you know, add them up together, 700, 800, uh, 300. So let's say we've got these other costs that are not aligned, 1500, so that's going to be 1800. So we're going to go over here, we're going to total them up somewhere else, and then we're going to just put that one lump sum right here, and that'll update our financials for us. Tax rate, if you're going to be paying 15%, put that 15%. If you want to stay typical 20%, then put that there. The growth rates, you're going to be able to do your growth rates for year two and three for sales. Um, cost of goods, salary. So these are all your growth rates you can go ahead and change. And again, as you change these, the profit and loss statement and the income statement will change as well. And then finally, we talked about the loan information. And that lo the loan information here is tied to this cell right here. So if you make change your loan information to 75000 then the loan will be right here. Interest rate's 5%, 30-year term. Your payment is calculated for you. So the only information that you can make, um, changes that you can make on the profit and loss tab is going to be your monthly sales growth. So I've got it estimated that your organization, once you start up, is going to be anywhere between 1% to 3 to 5% growth rates. Um, you can go ahead and change the growth rates right here. So you've got your um, sales growth right here. If we want to change it to 1%, then we can go ahead and change it to 1%. Um, if we're seasonal, we might want to reduce our sales by a, spe a specific amount, and we can do that here as well. And then finally, for month 10, 11, and 12, we can do that here, here, and here. Um, but those are the only sales that you can update on the profit and loss tab. Once you make your changes, then your income statement will go ahead and update accordingly here. And then you'll have your projections tabs, and these will also update accordingly here as well. Let's go ahead and double this to 30 customers so we can have a better, um, better view of our projections. So for this projection tab, you're going to get your an annual costs or annual revenues right here. And then I'll give you your annual, annual cost, your annual net profits. And then I'll also calculate your profit, um, profit margins here. This will be your sales growth here, whatever your sales growth is. Again, this is just a summary tab. And then I do throw in a um, nice little chart right here with your revenues, your expenses, and your net profits. All right. So once you make all your changes, once all your changes are done, then you do need to go into your Word document and um, update the information accordingly. So the way you're going to update your Word document, um, for example, if you, um, you're going to have to update your profit and loss statements here. So you would go to the profit and loss. You scroll on over. And you would go to the profit and loss a pro forma income statement year one quarter one you start at the top and you'd highlight all the way down to net profit you hit your control c which would then highlight and you have your little moving bars right here you would then go over to your profit and loss for year one month one through four and quarter one you'll highlight this information hit backspace and now it's gone then you would hit control v and so now your information is aligned accordingly. And so we can then see that our um, sales revenues are 64,500, which is identical here. And our net income 70,000, 17,044, that's the same there. And we know that's, the, um, that's correct because if we do undo, we have um, monthly revenues of 27,000. We fix that problem, whoops. We, we fixed that problem and we again we now have the income right here of 64,500 which is where we need it to be and then once we make that change there we then want to make our changes for every one of the um, spreadsheets so we want to get rid of this one here and then we'll go over to our spreadsheet we will highlight year one quarter two hit control C come over here control V and then we've got that updated. Then we're going to go to the um, profit and loss for quarter one, um, year one, quarter three. We're going to get rid of it. Oops, undo that. So we just want to highlight this right here, backspace it. Then we're going to come over here, do the same thing. Profit and loss, income statement, year one, quarter three, control copy. Back over here, control V. 
and then we're going to do the same thing for quarter four. We want to make sure we just get the um, file done. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing. Control copy, control V, and we've got that updated. The final um, piece of the puzzle we need to update is going to be the income statement. We'll get rid of that. We'll click on the income statement tab, scroll down, control copy it, come over here, control V it. And there we go. We now have the pro forma income statement updated in the income statement. So with those few copy and paste and um, mitig uh, changing around some of our numbers here, we now, <clears throat> we now have our business plan updated with our numbers from the financial model. All right, so hopefully this information was helpful for learning how to use your Excel financial model. And um, please refer to this tutorial anytime that you have um, any kind of questions or you need a refresher on how to use your financial model. Make sure to use this tutorial. And as always, um, hopefully this was in, um, helpful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And as always, have a fantastic day. Thank you.